Hey, buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about static friction. Now before we work our example problem here, let's make sure we know what static friction is and how it's different than dynamic friction. And I think you know that friction is just the force that's generated when one object tries to slide across another one. So if you look at maybe my two hands here, I'm pushing them together. So there's a normal force between them. If I try to slide one past the other, if um, I don't push hard enough to make them move, they're not moving with respect to each other, but there's still a shear force between them. That shear force is generated by static friction. Static means they're not moving with respect to each other. So, so as an example, let's use my longboard. All right. Now, we're using a longboard because I can't put a car in here. But let's say this is like a car rolling down a road, and rolling down the road here. As my longboard's rolling across the, the blackboard, or a car's rolling across the road, the wheel is turning. So the wheel, even though it's turning, the contact surface with respect that's on the ground is not moving with respect to the ground, right? So even though the wheel is turning, the part of the wheel that's contacting the ground is not sliding across the ground. That's static friction. Dynamic friction is when the wheel is sliding with respect to the ground. And many of us have experienced this. So we have two coefficients of friction. We have a static coefficient of friction, mu sub s, and a dynamic coefficient of friction I'm calling mu sub d. And here's the thing. Dynamic coefficient of friction is usually lower than static coefficient of friction. So if you're in a car, that means it's harder to stop when the wheels are sliding than when they're not. That's why anti-lock brakes work. What they do is they get the wheels turning. They keep you from locking the wheels. Keep the wheels turning so that they're, uh, even though they're moving, the, the contact patch is rolling across the ground, not sliding across the ground. And then you get to stop the car with static friction, not dynamic friction. So that's pretty dramatic. Let's, let's get a simpler example of static friction. Let's say I'm pushing against something really big that won't move and I'm leaning into it really hard and the, my feet are being on the ground or being pushed into the ground by my body weight but also there's a horizontal force from me pushing. Well as long as my feet don't slide that force I'm generating between my shoe and the floor or the ground is static friction. It's dictated by the static coefficient of friction. So I wonder what that would look like. Huh. Yeah, probably something like that. So with that out of the way, let's do a sample problem. So we've got a box here and it weighs 500 kilograms. It's pretty heavy, half a ton. And let's say it's full of Pop-Tarts. It's got a lot of Pop-Tarts in it. And we've got a static coefficient of friction of 0.5. And we're pulling on it with a, perhaps a rope or something. But there's a little bit of a hitch here. The rope is not pulling horizontal to the ground. It's actually pulling up at a little angle. Eh, it's a complication, but not that big. We'll figure out how to deal with it. So let's start now. It would be good if we had some sort of process or recipe to do this. We do. I've been calling it the recipe. There are four mandatory steps to the recipe and one optional one. Step one, you need a working diagram. Well, there it is. Step two, you need a free body diagram. We're going to do that here in a second. Step three, you write out the equations of static equilibrium. And step four, you solve for something. The optional step five is to enjoy celebratory baked goods, which I'll probably do off camera. So let's get started here. We'll go given, find, solution. Now, if you're one of my students here at Purdue, you know about GFSA format, given, find, solution, answer. There's given, find, solution. We'll get answer here in a little bit. Now, GFSA is a format. The recipe is a process. So we execute the recipe within the GFSA format. They work together. One is not, uh, con doesn't contradict the other one. 
So the solution, well, let's see, step two is to draw the free body diagram. Let's do that. So I'm going to draw this box here, and I'm going to cut it free from or free it from its boundary conditions. I'm going to free it from the ground, and now I'm going to apply some forces here that uh, are the ones the ground would apply to it. So let's see, I've got a weight. All right, now I've got a force in the x direction and a component of force in the y direction. We'll sort those out here in a minute. I've got the normal force coming up from the ground. Okay, that's the, for the vertical force that the ground applies to the box. And then I've also got a horizontal force here. This is the friction force. And that is mu s times n. That's the maximum it can be. All right, so there we've got it. We've got a free, well, it's not a free body diagram yet because it doesn't have a positive sign convention. Well, let's fix that. Okay, and remember, we need a sign convention for all our arrows to make sense. And also remember, physics doesn't know anything about our coordinate system or our sign convention. Physics just works. This is here for us to keep track of things. This is here kind of for the bookkeeping. All right, so there's step one. There's step two. What's step three? Write out some equations of equilibrium. Let's do that. And normally, I would write out this, but I've already got something here called f sub x. That's ambiguous. We can't have that. Let's do it this way. Some of the forces, and I'm going to write just horizontal, just to make it clear that I'm summing forces in the horizontal direction, and this is just one of the forces. Well, it's nice because there's only two forces in the horizontal direction. So um, there's the static friction force there. And uh, so that's in the, in, it goes against my sign convention, so that's negative. And then this is positive. And that has to equal zero. Uh, that's it, isn't it? OK, well, let's unpack this a little bit. All right, so that's going to be um, mu s times n plus f of x. Now, f sub x, is that sine or cosine? Let's figure this out. OK, there's my force triangle. Looks to me like f of x over f must be cosine theta, right? So that's going to be f cosine theta equals 0 right there. All right, that's good. Now, if it worked in the horizontal direction, let's write it out in the vertical direction as well. I'm going to erase this because I need some room on my little board here. Now, I'm going to write VERT for vertical to make distinguish it from F sub Y, because uh, that, that, that is in the vertical direction, but that's just one of a couple vertical forces. So let's see. Um, start over here. N is in the positive direction. Weight, MG, is in the negative direction. MG. And then F sub Y is in the positive direction. There we go. Well, from that force triangle that I just erased, this is going to be f sine theta. Well, let's, let's, let's back this all out here. Um, looks to me like the normal force is going to be mg minus f sine theta. Well, what that means is the normal force of the, of the ground against the box is the weight of the box minus the upward component of that. All right, I'm, 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 I'm picking that up. That's good. So let's substitute n into here to see what we get. So minus, all right, there we go. Let's see. I've got one equation with one unknown, and my unknown is f. Well, that's what I'm trying to find. So now all I've got to do is figure out f. That's just, I'm, this is just algebra now. So, um, let me erase this part, and we'll solve this. OK, so I'm going to expand this out here, and then eventually solve for f. So let's do this. All right, expanded it out. Now let's collect terms. OK, I think we know what to do now. I'm just going to divide by everything in the parenthesis. And we'll have f on one side of the equal sign and a bunch of stuff that we know on the other side. OK, there we are. This is a half. That's 500. That's 
sine 20 degrees, cosine 20 degrees. When you work all that out, what you find out is F is, let me make sure I get this right here, is 2208.06 newtons. Now, GFSA, the A part is answer, and in my classes we usually write out the answer to four significant figures. So, to, to be formal about it, we would do this, and then 2208 newtons and draw a box around it. There's the formal GFSA. So, there we got it. We got a number here, and it uh, looks to be correct. By the way, it's, a, it's less than that number would be if uh, the force were horizontal. So, that up angle a little bit does help, uh, reduces the, the tension that's required. So, there we have it. We've got a static friction example. We know now the difference between static and dynamic friction. We've gone through the recipe. We've done working diagram, free body diagram, equations of static equilibrium, and answer. I'm about to go enjoy step five, the optional baked goods. Hope this helps, and I'll talk to you next time.